Pull up a stool and pour yourself a pint as you're about to join three intrepid drinkers, Kevin, Justin, and Mark, as they embark on another beer-tastic voyage. Benvenutos! And welcome welcome to a beer-tastic voyage! (laughs) Yes, I don't know more Spanish, I'm sorry. (laughs) Thank you for carrying that for me, Justin. No problem, I obviously don't know any more Spanish either. I can't speak an eight. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. Hey, don't look at that kind of action. I'm Kevin. Hi, Kevin. So, but don't go. I'm good. Yeah. How are you doing, Justin? I'm not too bad. Yes, I'm Justin. That's right. And that's Mark. Yeah. That's me. All right. Excellent. Now that all the uh, formalities have been observed, today we have some beer. We continue our second round through some of the local breweries as we make our way back to Barrage Brewing. And if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about the history of Barrage Brewing, you can um, either bother Steve, go there and bother him. You can or, repeatedly yell penis. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be the correct way to go. That's about. probably the best that's way what to I was going to say. Yeah. You can go back and listen to our uh, 2018 Frankie Point Cast Festival to listen to Steve yell penis multiple times. Yes. Or you can, of course, go back even further into the archives to episode four and uh, check out and see how much better we sound now, both actual auditory quality and how much better we are at talking about beer. Yes. So that's exciting. Today we have some interesting offerings from there. Um, we have a Belgian Golden Strong Ale, a Cranberry Grapefruit Saison, and um, lastly is a Chocolate Hazelnut Stout. So a little bit of variety in the, uh, the flavors that are definitely coming out today. Yeah, I'm kind of afraid of the Saison, but we'll get there. I don't understand why you're afraid. Because he I hates like grapefruit. Oh, grapefruit. Um, it was cranberry. You said it twice now. Cranberry, oh. cranberry grapefruit. Okay. Saison. I never, I never, I literally, you said that and texted me. I never actually drank yeah. Um So we're going to start with uh, Conquer Then Divide, which is the Belgian Golden Strong Ale, which comes at, an, at a very lightweight 8.8% ABV. Um, has a nice golden yellow color to it, a little bit of a cloudiness to it, but nothing crazy. And, uh, I mean, we got a little hiss when I when I opened up the uh, little browlette. It's been sitting for a day or so. Yeah, but, there, uh, there was a there fair amount of, you know, head in when you poured it out, too. It just did not persist. No. No. It's, uh, having just, just brewed a, a Belgian Blonde, I, I'm, I'm happy that the uh, the yeast character on this, on the nose, is similar. It has that, that Belgian, uh, um... It's got the bubblegum bubble fruit, a little bit of black pepper yeah, going it, on. Yeah, yeah, I don't get the um, what's the other? I don't get the like the other side of the clove. Of the clove. Yeah, yeah, I don't get that too much. My, you know, basically the fermentation ch- uh, temperature um, kind of dictates how much of each you're going to get. So this potentially would have done on the on the um, higher end of the spectrum. Careful with your swirling there, but I know I'm living dangerously here, swirling all the time. Like exactly, you're holding it directly over your keyboard there. Yeah, I, I, this is this is what they call like making the stakes high. <laughs> so I'm not very good at swirling. I usually spill it all over myself. So if you're doing it over the top of something that is quite little, literally my livelihood, then I'll yeah, probably be better at it. Th- this reminds me too, like uh, last evening, Justin was here and we were starting <laughs> the lick container. Yeah. And uh, I pulled out uh, a bottle of the Kolsch that I made, and then also uh, a Captain Orange clear water Kolsch. Okay. So we could drink them side by side. Right. And uh, he was like, and we were drinking out of these little cups, right? Mm-hmm. And I filled it pretty far up. And he was right. like trying to get the aroma, and he ended up like Which sticking his whole nose right in the, in, the, in the beer. I had been judging all morning, so I was kind of used to having the room to like shove my nose in there. Right. And I'm not kidding, I snorkeled the shit. Like it, I, <laughs> I went full like ca- uh, cocaine cowboy. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I was like, Whoa! and then he was like, oh, oh, birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it was pretty rough. Oh. Um, this uh, I uh, damn good Belgian, but to go to go back to the aroma, yeah, you're getting more of the bubble gum. Um, you know, you pour it out. To me, I like Belgian beer because when you pour one out, with the exception of maybe a quad before you smell it, when you look at a beer, you can know if it's a Belgian beer. You can just tell it's it's clear, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? Like it's got a little bit of oh, they always have a little bit of a haze to them. The 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 uh, the lighter ones. Yeah, in general, uh, I like this though. It's very good. It is most digestible. <laughs> um, flavor-wise, you're going to carry carry through the bubble gum. Um, I also well. get, I also get like a, a lot of pepperiness. Yeah, 
on the it, at the initial sip, and I like the mouthfeel. I'm not getting a ton of uh, pepper. I get like but, a prickly sensation. Okay. On my palate, but um, yeah, I get that little bit of the the forward the golden ale kind of sweetness to it in the beginning, and um, it's got the good mouthfeel. It feels a little greasy, not a in a negative way, but just kind of has that texture to it. Um, I think it's a pretty good version of a of a Belgian ale. It yeah, finishes yeah. pretty dry too, and like it definitely. Uh, yeah, that's true. Aside from the warming sensation, it does not, yes. uh, you know, seem like over eight percent alcohol. No, you do get a little bit of the of that uh, that warming as you finish the sip, kind of in that same spot that you get when you drink a good uh, drink a good scotch. Yeah, this is uh, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty damn good Belgian. I, I love me uh, love me some Belgian. I'm hoping to to brew more of them as uh, after you know I get uh, situated in a new place. So, uh, Mark, why don't you get us started with a rating on the uh, the Belgian, on the Conquer Then Divide? Uh, I will go Growler for this. Um, I might need to take a nap or go to sleep after that. Right. But I will enjoy that. Or, or drink a bunch of activating char- charcoal. It's one of those two things. Um. For me, I think this one is just going to sneak into the bomber category for me. Um, most times it'll probably be a pint, but this one's pretty good. Um, but I'm going to agree. This might be uh, end of a long day beer. You know, it's 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 got that warmth, that warming sensation that you want it there. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, this is the full full growler. I uh, I don't know what I, I just can't get enough of, of the the Belgian. Yeast character. I mean, whether it's on the lower end of the fermentation schedule with the, uh, the clove or the, or the banana or anything in store, or, or the bubble gum or anything in between, I'm a fan. Do let me smell this. Do you, what? Uh, so the next we're going to is going to be this uh, cranberry uh, barcade straight for saison. Yep, called one more tease. Right, because this is this is uh, the second another version of their little tease, right? Or little tease that we did in our last episode. Little. Lil, yeah, Lil, 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 Lil T. T. You gotta say it like you have a golf ball stuck in the back of your throat. And this one is not much further behind uh, than the than the Belgian with a 8.2 percent ABV. Unfortunately, I don't have any more of the uh, other intel on the beers. It's kind of he doesn't really publish a whole lot of the. Uh, Holy shit! All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pour this away from our, our expensive devices. <laughs> I'm gonna get the paper towels. <laughs> No, barely anything came out. I know, but yeah. kind of just give me one of those. Okay, give you, give you a little technical difficulty. Stand by. That's right. All right. So you guys carry the show. Where was the slush the bucket? Mark, get the slush bucket. I'm going to take. I'm going to take these into the unfinished portion of the basement and then pour them. Okay. Um. So saisons. What? This is another one of the Belgian characters, right? Belgian styles. Yeah, saisons are um, Belgian farmhouse style right. beers. So, do you think it's possible that he's using the same yeast strain that he has it's very from possible. the Belgian Strong Ale to make the Saison? Yeah, it's very possible. Like, I know, speci- like, the Brick House, I know specifically, like, every spring, Paul gets, like, an order of the, the French Saison yeast. Okay. And he uses that yeast for their Aegis Beer de Guard. He uses Which it for um, basically all of their Belgian style beers. He uses that same right. yeast. And it goes back to that idea that you can change what you get out of that yeast by changing the fermentation temperature. Yeah. And create vastly different styles. Right. From the same beer. I think that's really, from the same uh, yeast strain. That's really incredible. Yeah, so like the ages, I'm pretty sure he ferments on the cooler side. Right. You know, to keep those yeast characters more subdued. And then on, uh, I'm drawing a blank right now, but, uh, you know, it lets it get warmer on right. the other beers to get it more expressive. I'm looking forward to trying this one. We're doing a little bit of vamping here while Justin comes back. Aha, he's back. So, and like, on that subject of, of French Cezanne yeast. Look at the color. This is incredible. Yeah, definitely you can tell that the, the cranberry. You know that there was cranberry in here, uh, just because, in general, he would not expect the Cezanne to be this color. Without good of the light on it, like, you could mistake it for, like, maybe just being an amber ale. 
in color. Yeah. Mark, make sure you take a picture of this one. Because Justin just came back and it is a delightful um purpley orangey red color. Like it is it, it looks like a ruby grapefruit. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks like ruby red grapefruit or you know, light cranberry um beverage. So anyway, what I was getting at with the French Saison yeast. Right. Left hand recently sued White Labs. Okay. Uh, I don't know, you may have seen it. Uh, basically, there is a... Some Saccharomyces yeast are a special variant called uh, Diastaticus. Okay. And what makes that variant special is they can pr produce enzymes to break down the longer chain sugars that are generally thought of as unfermentable by Interesting. Saccharomyces. Okay. And Left Hand is suing White Labs because, as far as Left Hand is concerned, they've traced the contamination back to yeast that they received from White Labs as having these diastatic yeast strains in because Left Hand ended up taking a huge loss on packaged beer that they had sent out because this yeast was still alive in the bottles and started chowing down on, on the, the quote-unquote unfermentable sugar that right. exploded all the bottles. S exploding bottles and like God. just... You know, cans like throwing off the uh, flavor profiles on the beer from the additional interesting and such. That is really interesting. Um, no, like that 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 intrigues me. Like yeah, that, I would be in, uh, I'm interested to know how that's going to finish up. Um, yeah, it's definitely something that I want to keep an uh, yeah keep an eye on. keep an eye on. But you know, it's just something to something to keep in mind that French saison yeast is generally that's particular variant there are others as well but right the french saison specifically okay. which is part of the reason why like saisons generally are like really dry on the finish as well mm -hmm. good because they can eat through so much of that fermentable sugar right yeah. or other otherwise unfermentable sugars um the uh the aroma on this uh um in this particular saison i you look at it and it, you, you're expecting a fruit bomb which is not what i get i, I get on the aroma more of the grapefruit and yeah, absolutely. Grapefruit is much more the prominent note in the nose. Yeah, but not, not the bitter grapefruit that I don't personally like. Because I agree, I'm with Mark. I'm not. I don't. I've tried grapefruit so many times, and I don't know that there's a single food that I hate more than grapefruit. Like I just, I cannot stand it. Um, I hate sauerkraut. <laughs> um, um, but the that, that that being said, the nose doesn't put me off at all. And then flavor wise, um. I don't know how to put this without sounding negative, because it's not a negative, but the flavor was a lot more muted than I anticipated from both the vivid color and the aroma. Um, but I enjoy it. It's a, I like it because it has a Saison quality to it. It doesn't have a lot of fruit. It's kind of that Saison beginning of the farmhouse funk mixed with the, the fruit. Um, I think you mentioned it, you mentioned it before that it looks kind of like a ruby red grapefruit. And that's kind of the flavor that I'm getting as well. It's a little bit sweeter than your average grapefruit. Mark does not like this beer at all. Oh, I am. Um, and I, you just made the face that I... I know. I, I tried it. Yeah. I, but, like, that was the second sip. I, I yeah. went back to the second sip, but I just can't pay it. But for me, this one's... Um, we used to... Um, for Thanksgiving, one of my family members used to make a cranberry relish where she would take... Uh, fresh cranberry, like uh, frozen cranberries, put them in the food processor with like a chop with just like a quartered orange, rind and all. Oh, wow. And so you would get the sweetness and the bitterness, and it came out a lot like this, where you get almost like kind of a, a, a really tart flavor profile with it. And this is kind of what you get here. You get a little bit of that bitterness from the grapefruit kind of. You get a little bit of cranberry sweetness, but it's not a very strong sweetness. And that Saison quality of being a little bit spicy, not spicy, um, I'm drawing funk. a What? Funk? No, not funk. I wouldn't think of it as funk. It's just got this little bit of a... Je ne sais quoi. Yeah, I, won't, yeah, I almost went there, but I'm like, that's fucking useless to say. <laughs> um, not that the rest of what I'm saying is really that helpful. Um, I'm going to go with like that pepper, that Saison kind of pepperiness. It's not a heat, but it's kind of that sensation of what pepper does to your tongue it's one of those shitty it's one of those shitty things like that saison um flavor that you can't 
it's hard to describe any other way. And obviously, unless right. you've had one, it's, it's hard to uh, to say. And, and it, especially in saisons, it varies so widely how much of that you get. Um, typically, in my experience, unless you're getting a saison that's been bottle conditioned and, and meant to sit for a long time, you're not going to get the uh, the barnyard situation. So, right, you know, if you're out at a brewery and you see this is saisons, have chances are. Um, it's going to be one of the more palatable saisons for an average beer drinker, which I think this is. Yeah, um, I think it might tol- I think it might tolerate some more funk to it very yes. well. I think it might make it a little bit more interesting. Um, I I think it's pretty good. It's interesting. I don't know. I'm having a hard time coming to more words with it, but I'm very happy to have drank to have experienced it. So, uh, does that I, make sense? It does make sense. I, I totally understand what you're Even saying. That's like the most black milk toast like review of it ever. <laughs> it, it is, but it's not a. There's not a, a whole lot you can you can really say about it. it I don't. I don't personally. I, I identify the cranberry and the fact that to me it cuts some of the bitterness of the grapefruit. Like for me, for Mark, which I'm gonna you know I'm gonna let him expound on on his uh, two sip experience now, but. Uh, I don't think that that it quelled enough of the grapefruit for Mark to be. Uh, no, not at all. And I just burped and tasted it again. <laughs> that was a terrible experience. <laughs> so, so I, I think I feel a taster coming from you. It's definitely a fifty for me. Oh, like, okay. I, I, like if, if neither one of you wants to finish what's in my glass, then I'm gonna have to keep dumping. Well, I can tell you that I will definitely finish it because for me, this is a growl. I really, that's yeah, rough. I. I really enjoy this a lot. Um, I don't know what it is about it. it I don't know. I feel like Saison yeast took grapefruit and turned it into something I like. Um, for me, I'm not going to go quite as far as you. I'm going to go with the pint on it. Um, I can't quite, like, I, I'm having a hard time putting my uh, point on it of what I want, it, what else I want it to be. But it is juicy, it is refreshing. I kind of like that. And it's pretty tasty. I just don't know if I really want more than one of it in a sitting. I, I can definitely understand that. The uh, um, grapefruit quality definitely builds for me over time. But I don't know. It's just so weird. I don't know. Like, I can't this, really you know, this, could, this could be a this could be a great brunch beer. It actually it is very mimosa like. Like I could down I could down this like instead of having like I could down this instead of having juice at uh, or instead of a mimosa at. At, break, at brunch, like I could substitute this, especially if you if you have shitty in laws or something, and you like you absolutely positively need to drink it at yeah. breakfast with them. And, <laughs> and at eight point two, it's going to get you there. Yeah, you could, yeah this is you could, this guy. In my well. case, my mother. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's rainy. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could go with this like at at brunch. This could be an early an early day drinker. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just a fan. make sure you have something in between toothpaste and this, because then it'll no, just be absolutely hard. That's a bad situation. <laughs> yeah, you definitely want to add, add mint to this. Yeah, or you just use cinnamon toothpaste. Oh, cinnamon toothpaste. So not a fan of that. Um, what is our last beer? Our last beer is either Sweet Lewis or Sweet Louie. I don't know which one they're going with. It's um, I think it's Sweet Louis. L O U I S. So, but it's a hazelnut coffee stout coming in at a much more manageable 5.6% ABV. So this is going to kind of go back to at least a little bit more my wheelhouse got beers, what I normally go for. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, that's not cool. That's still not it. That's a little light. Ah, oh, here it is. All right, I'm going to well, assume this isn't going to explode, but let's, uh... all right. Wow, that's got a nice head on it. Yeah, that poured out a nice foamy tan head. So maybe not so tan. I can't really see from. Yeah, uh, it's here. definitely you got uh, some rose barley in there. Yeah, it's definitely it's got enough of, enough tan to make this. Stuff. I just want to rinse out this glass a little bit before I dump that in. There. Wow, did you, did you slam the rest of that? The rest of that? Uh, holy shit! You had a bit left in there. I was wondering. No, how. but it absolutely it is like it is like poundable. Oh, definitely. Like it's light enough that 
Well, plus it, you would, and you would, and we said it before, you would never guess that Saison was like eating change. No, ever. and honestly, you could almost pass it off that it's not even a beer. Like, no. Nah. Like, you could, I think you, it tastes like alcoholic grape juice. Yeah, that would definitely be like, like step, grape juice. Step, like, two of those steps would be like, oh my God, wherever the hell we are has never seen me this drunk. <laughs> 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 this diner has never seen me so drunk. <laughs> um, but, where, what are we, what are we on the notes here, Joe? Uh, I, I definitely get, uh, Ooh. Roasted nuttiness, yeah, on, on the aroma on this. This is like uh, coffee when you put that hazelnut stuff in there. I only know that because I've been next to someone at Seven Eleven that put way too much of that shit in their coffee. Yeah, that stuff's gross. It doesn't have the underlying sweet tones to it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, it smells very much like hazelnut creamer has been poured into the coffee. Oh god damn, that's good. <laughs> it kind of tastes like that too. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. It's uh, I I think it's gonna be a creeper though. I think it's gonna be as I as I keep drinking it. I think the flavor is going to to build immensely over the tongue. Uh, I think Kevin wants a razor blade. <laughs> no, I I think I just need to uh, flush my palate out a little bit too more of the uh, grapefruit from the last one. Oh, you you get that uh, because I'm kind of getting that like fruit juice and then coffee right away kind okay. of thing. So, do we have any more of those little cups floating around here, or just the ones that? You can just have the ones that have the uh, leftover beer in there. Oh, there we go. I'm going to put this still one of those. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to try that and rinse out a little bit more. Maybe swish and spit a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the the aroma um, and the flavor are pretty much the same to me. I get the same intensity of flavor, the same uh, um, coffee and hazelnut together. Um, a little more sweetness from the actual flavor than the aroma. I get like, I don't know if it's uh, tannin or something, but I get like a uh, lingering astringency in my mouth. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I can, I definitely pick up on it, but it, it's not. It doesn't build for me. If I wait a couple minutes before having another sip, it, uh, it's gone. I'm not saying that it's building, but like, if I take a sip, like when I move my tongue, I feel like I'm breaking, like, the coating. I feel like the skin's coming off my tongue. It's probably not good. You should probably get that checked out. Alright, so, after cleaning my palate off a little bit more, it definitely gets a much better flavor. Yeah, I mean, considering you chug probably goddamn near six ounces. Yeah, I, I slept, I slept the, the grapefruit grapefruit yeah, it, was, it was a lot of, it was an aggressive <laughs> chug there. Yeah. Um, so, Surprisingly, like easy to chug. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Um, the nose, the hazelnut is really prominent on the nose, and you get it not nearly as bad on the sip. I think it's a pretty good coffee stout. Like I like that to begin with. I'm just not huge on the hazelnut aroma that kind of like permeates everything for me, and it's exactly what we mentioned before like it but, the, yeah, like the yeah. coffee creamer is kind of like embedding its way into my skull and i can't quite get past that um that's i mean i don't mind coffee that's light and sweet but that's like those things just like churn my stomach a little bit i don't want weird flavored coffee creamers or things like that um i think it's like i said i think it's pretty good stout and i'm sure if it, this was just a base stout or base coffee stout recipe, I'd probably really enjoy it. I'm interested to want to know if he used like hazelnut flavored coffee in there to make it a coffee stout, or if he somehow how I want to know how he got the hazelnut, yeah, flavor, the hazelnut in there. flavor. That's what I'm interested to know. I want to know. I want to know what that is, so how we can cut that out and make and, and have a good beer, <laughs> <laughs> and ha and, ha and really really enjoy the beer afterwards. I uh I enjoy this. And actually, I, the sweetness uh, likens it to it's like the milk stout for me. Yeah. Um. You know, I think that the coffee creamer, obviously, never personally having it in my mind, this is what it would taste like. Yeah. And especially being someone who really enjoys sweets, I liked it. Um. You know, I, I'm gonna I'll kick off the ratings and I'll, I'll hit it with a bomber. Um. You know, I don't. Uh, two of them, and I think that the sweetness would probably be enough where I'm. All right. This is where I want to be. I'm at a, I'm at a pint for it, um, just because like you know there's the bit of astringency that I mentioned and 
you know, the, the hazelnut coffee creamer thing is a little bit too much for me to get by because that's not something I really care for either. But right. I definitely don't dislike this as much as grapefruit cranberry soda. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that um, if they put fish sauce and grapefruit together, you would you would eat it. No. <laughs> We're going to try that. We are. Later. I'm going to make some stir- make some ramen noodles with some... Uh, some grapefruit it's going to be supreme. grapefruit dashi. With some uh, grapefruit supremes in there and uh, add a little fish sauce to one. Oh, sounds horrifying. Oh, my God. <laughs> I really like I think I throw up on that one. Oh, my God. It's so gross. Um, what about you, Kevin? I'm going to go with a taster on this one. Wow. I can't get by that hazelnut flavor. Like, it just, it, I just keep getting the, the feeling of, like, artificial hazelnut creamer in there and I can't do it. Um so yeah I just I just can't go past the taster on it. I really don't I don't think I even really want to finish what I have in my glass right now. Alright. Well that makes uh if that you know it's a it is a, a strongly flavored beer. Yeah. So it definitely is gonna create that like you're gonna like it or you're not gonna like it. Yeah I'm gonna pass it up to you. That's alright. I got to drink a shitload of this episode. Yeah. The next one we record is gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah so that's my feelings on um, I will go back and say that, um, I'm always impressed by how well Steve can create really intense flavors. He is, yeah, he's a very talented as brewer. Um, he has a really great talent for creating those intense flavors, creating really good sweet flavors. Like, particularly on the sweet side of the spectrum. Like, he makes a lot of beers that fit that category. Yeah, we've talked about the Assault and Fudgery before. Yeah, Assault and and Fudgery, yada, yada, yada. yada, yada. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, When he tells you that there's a flavor in a beer, that's what you end up with. It's never, like, kind of there. Just like with that Cranberry uh, Saison. Those are two fairly subtle flavors in beer that you can identify both of those things if you're playing a part of that beer. Um. The tribal cow that they make, I think that was one that we had last yeah, time. Coconut, yeah. uh, that's their coconut milk stout. Um, that one, I mean, again, I just re- I think I remember the coconut. It was toasted coconut, so the coconut was a little bit much, if I recall. But um, but you you said it really well, Justin. When he says that there's something in a beer, you know that that you're gonna taste that thing in the beer. Yeah, there's no there's no you know wondering. Yeah. What it was, um, and you know we we've covered. They've got eight things on the board, and we've covered three of them today. And recently, we've talked about who's a good boy a few times, and then we just mentioned uh, two more that we had in the past. And so, really, the only other thing on the board that he has is uh, I'm really not okay, which is a comic uh, a comet mosaic ITL, hmm. um, which. I'm almost I'm I'm kind of in, I'm kind of interested to go and try because that's something that doesn't really fit with the rest of the board in the sense that there's no item that you can say oh that's what that's going to taste like right um, the Belgian that we had today you kind of know what a Belgian's going to taste like when you go in there's a flavor profile that's specific to it but like an IPL that could have all sorts of different flavors. Yeah, you I mean, know that could be anything, and I, I mean I know roughly the mosaic flavor, but I'm not familiar with Comet. Are you guys familiar with Comet? Yeah, yeah. I have some in the freezer, but I couldn't tell you what the. Oh wait, I can look them up. Okay, we have the internet. So while Mark finds that, but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, Justin, like he's he's very he, just because I don't like it, I don't want to ever present the fact that they that grapefruit, grapefruit lime, and grass. Sounds okay. like Mark's favorite. Yeah, so it sounds like something that Mark would despise. Good thing that's good thing you have that in the fridge. It's gonna be there a while. Four ounces. Of it. <laughs> Holy oh, shit! You had mentioned something about uh, doing something with Citra earlier. You could probably substitute that for Citra somewhere. Citra came up somewhere before. Well, yeah, that's because we have uh, cryo an citra. ounce of cryo Citra pellets. Okay. And so Kevin, I know that you're not up on. But cryo hops is a recent thing that they've started selling to home brewers, wherein basically they're freezing the hop cones and put nitrogen. The freeze dry. And then smashing them. 
Okay. Yeah, so and separating out all the lupulin glands, which contain the alpha acids and all the other essential oils from the hot matter. That's a fun word to say, lupulin. Yes. Okay, so, so it, it, there's it's no intense. the hot matter in there. It's just it, yeah, it's, it's just like a just frozen pellet of a lupulin. Right. <laughs> Go ahead, you say it, because it just automatically makes your tongue do stupid things. I know it does. That's why I'm laughing. It's say it. Funny. Lupulin. Yeah, see? Say it, Frenchie. <laughs> Yes, so the idea is you can get um, more alpha acids without adding more vegetable matter, which right. can, you know, when you add a shitload of uh, dry hop to a beer in particular, yeah. you can get the, the vegetable all of uh, the so, like our Naripa. Yes. Isn't that where, that's where you get the quote-unquote hop haze from, right? Um, the vegetable matter? The, the it can be, yeah. Can be. It's, right. from, uh, it, it's from proteins that are imparted to the beer from the hop. So using those cryo hops, would you still obtain that visual? I guess? Oh, like for a New England IPA? Yeah. I don't know if you would. Or would I don't you know. create a would you be able to create a clear New England IPA by using the cryo hops? I've I've heard of a couple of people online that are trying to do exactly that. I think one of them is Drew Beecham from Experimental Brewing. I think he wants to create a, a an, an IPA that's clear that has the same flavor as a New England IPA. See, to, to me, that's really yeah. to me that's just really interesting. I, I, I want. I was talking yesterday while we were judging. I want to make a black IPA, a Cascadian dark ale. Yes, I do. No, no, sorry, a black New England IPA. I didn't say that right. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's so, something else. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's a new. Inviting styles as we go now, eh? Yes, it is. I want to make a backflip switch. It's, it's actually black New England IPA sounds like a, a snowboard move. Yeah, you know, like uh, <laughs> big twist. I, I want to yeah. do a double big twist. <laughs> Only if you do a seven twenty before. Right, exactly. Yeah, what did you do? Yeah, I did a seven twenty set black IPA from New England. <laughs> what up? <laughs> well, it I, is uh, dope as fuck. I'm pretty sure that uh, we, you know, the next thing that Steve can make would be a, like a flip flop uh, stout, and I'll probably drink it. So yeah. Um, so try them. I know um, Steve always makes his way out to all the festivals, and his beers are getting out, and you stop by, they're over in Farmingdale, they're right off 110, so it's not that hard to get to. And they, their tap room has expanded now, right? They, like, took over the CrossFit next door or something? Mm, not that I know of. No? Um, well, when I stopped by there on Friday, um, it was still the same little tap room. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, the door was open. Um, I think they are in the process of expanding into that gotcha. spot, because the guy did have to run to go grab a keg out of there. Yeah, yeah. But it was not open yet for pouring things. Or and if it was, I just didn't walk into that part of the room. Yeah. Um, but check them out and let us know what you think. You should hit us up on any of the social media or the good old fashioned email. Leave us a voicemail. It's always fun too. Yes. Yep. Justin's right. still waiting for somebody to leave a message where they just go. I'm heavy. I'm. I'm I am heavy for the record. But I meant to say that I'm. No, lo- I'm, I'm. I'm lonely at night. So you know. No, you're help me out. It's okay. Alright. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers. If you enjoyed Beertastic Voyage, please be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and don't forget to review and rate us. The guys can be found online at www.beertasticvoyage.com, on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash beertasticvoyage, and Twitter and Instagram at beertasticshow, or send them a good old-fashioned email at beertasticvoyage at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and cheers for local beers.